Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group and today I'd like to talk to you about DAC Logger and using it with products like the MW100 and the MX100 which uh, means that we'll also be using what's called a gate product. So already I've got set up a MW100 which is also known as a DAC Master and essentially it's a rack based data acquisition system that's uh, busy uh, recording on its own right now and I have the MX100 which is more of a uh, network based data acquisition system that requires a PC to actually log any incoming data so let's get started here so I've already got uh, DACWorks installed so if I hit down here I go start I go all programs, I go over to Yokogawa DACWorks, you can see as part of the DACWorks family I've got Gate MX MW, I've also got like Gate WT if I'm doing any of the power meters, Gate OPC in case I'm doing an OPC server, in case I got one of our pharmaceutical recorders or a micro R or a, a, a controller, I've got those gates as well. So let's start by opening up uh, Gate MX MW and as it comes up you can see I've already got a couple here but if I go down here and go search if I can find them on the network they'll show up down here under machines nearby alright and you can see here's my MW100 at that IP address and there's my uh, MX100 right there so literally all you need to do to add these up into this area is you just drag and drop them up there so I've already done that and then I went ahead and did a git info get info and this sucks in all the specific information on them like how many channels you have configured what their scan rates are so I've got some at 10 milliseconds one second and five second for my MX100 over here my MW100 I just got one at 100 milliseconds okay if I go to channel here these are all the channels that are configured so we can see I have 19 of them the first 18 are for the MX and then we can see for the last one here see how it did this little increment here also if I pick this here you know we can see what system number it has here which is system number three so these guys are broken into different systems based on their scan rate so here's the 10 milliseconds one second and five seconds so 10, 1, 5 and then there's the MW off by itself with just one channel you can actually see that it sucked in the uh, tag name for that particular unit. Then I can go over to run here and go ahead and hit run. And it's going to go ahead and start essentially communicating off with these guys. And then once again, you can see those system numbers replicated here and the unit numbers for the MX and the MW. And we can see they're communicating. Their status is great. Their numbers are good. If their status was not good, you'd see these go red. Let me also show you up here under file port number this 50297 number that's going to be important number to show and I'll show you why later on so we'll go OK I'm just going to minimize this for now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all programs I'm going to go to Yokogawa DAC Works I'm going to go to DAC Logger and I'm going to open up the manager and essentially configuring DAC Logger manager works from right to left for bringing in all the tags so let's go here we're gonna click on our ENVI tag and then the first thing we're gonna to add to bring in information from this gate guy is to pick under model number we're gonna pick gate there's a lot of other things in here that we have that don't require gates for example like our DAC stations like the DX100, 200, 2000, MVs, CX's, FX's some of the Darwin stuff okay those, those don't require gates but the MW and the MX do so once I go gate then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick Ethernet over here I'm gonna click on this local host and down here port number 50297 if it's not showing 50297 click fix and then type in 50297 so it matches up the port for your gate okay if for some reason gate is running on another PC you just put in the IP address of that other PC as well as the gate port number alright so we go OK and then what you can do is you can click here and you can go determination and what it'll do is it'll go out to the gate and determine what's exactly in it 
and then it's going to suck back how many measurement channels if you have any math channels it'll bring that back as well as well as tell you what type of gate you've got active all right so once we're done there we can just hit save we can then go to the tag button here I've already sucked them in but just an example you could go up here click this in and this would suck in all the tags all right now it didn't give us uh, tag names for these guys it just kind of gave a default tag name but if I do something like this I go uh, I hold down my shift button and hold down my shift button now and click all the way to there see how it highlighted all those in red for a bulk select then this button opens up here and I can go ahead and receive all the tag settings so any of them that had tag names would come in and bring in a tag name none of these other guys really had tag names so what I'll do is I'll just kind of fill in them all with the default names and then I'm just gonna pick in this guy here since he's the only guy I actually set up a tag name with alright and that sucked that tag name from the MW into the gate into here okay so then I just go save exit out of there next thing you do is you do your group settings and once again you can just go ahead and do your auto group settings it's gonna go out there determine how many groups you have bring in all the information you can go save alright now at this point you're actually ready to scan but before we do that let me just show you a few types of options here uh, first of all is project settings you could uh, give the project a name you could use password protection so people uh, don't uh, mess with it without the password you can say what you want to do in terms of startup uh, only scan measurement data or scan and record so this is only like bringing in the measurement data this is actually bringing it in and recording it okay you also have desktop protection that's where you put in the password logger configuration you can say how often you want to scan and then the rate at which you're recording so for example if I'm scanning my points every five seconds I can say how often I want to record which is essentially once every five so so five seconds here and just a ratio of one to one if I were to do this as something like ten you know go over here you can now see that I'm actually recording a point every fifty seconds okay so I'm just gonna leave it as a ratio of one to one okay and then we can uh, see what else we can do recording start on record but I could also start recording at a fixed time and I could end it at a fixed time or a certain amount of data points okay right now it would just start recording and then when I hit stop recording it would stop but I could also do it on fixed time or a certain amount of samples this is where the file is going to be saved if I wanted to add a date to the file name I could do that I could do a file division like on so many data counts or per day per month if I wanted to add in some comments what I want to do in terms of uh, auto connection math I could say what I want to do there scan start record start okay so those are just some of the things that you could do there alright and then these are just replicating a lot of what's already there the only other thing I'll show here is uh, just like uh, on some of our uh, DAX stations and MW's we can do reports well we can also go ahead and configure reports in here hourly daily monthly weekly okay state all the different ways we want to do it we can also do uh, events so you can go in here and set up all types of new events hit the new button down here what condition what you want to display tag name tag number what type of logic and or or condition type you know you can essentially program in all types of different stuff target file what you want for an output process you can FTP email convert a file stuff like that there's all types of events that you can set up alright so let's move right along I'm gonna hit the scan button here so that's gone off and I've started to measure my data I hit the record that means that I'm now logging the data once every five seconds if I go over here to monitor I can go ahead and take a look at my real-time values I'm just gonna minimize that for now so here's a trend view and it's gonna slowly trek across since it's doing a sample every five seconds here 
can change my grid color over here if I want change my background color over here if I want all right I can turn pens on and off over here if I want I can switch between some different views old school meter view if I want to view that tag name instead of just uh, the tag number under view I can go uh, tag name and we can see down here that it now says top rack temperature so that's how hot it is in my office right now. Got a thermocouple hooked up there. I can go over here and look at stuff digitally. Okay, these are some that I don't actually have hooked up at all. These are just some floating values. Those are just a digital module right there. Okay, if I have any alarms set up, this is going to show me all my alarms I have set up, my alarm log. I can go back to my digital view. I can also switch between tag and number here. I can do stuff like, uh, once again, auto grouping, display settings. I can go in here if I want to change my scales that I'm looking at stuff, trip line colors. So you see if there's anything else interesting here to show you guys. And essentially, once you open these up, you can uh, have multiple open and see I'm just closing all the ones I had in the background there okay that's the last one alright so that's the real-time monitor and once again you can kind of see here's the little temperature trickling along here I can uh, do stuff like uh, maybe stack them so there's all the individual scales I can stack them in their own little scale I've got too many there but you know I could start turning off some of them you know and this cleans up things a little bit okay so there we go I've got two of them on there right now alright so anyways I'm gonna close this out for now go back to here alright so that's the monitor Here's my viewer for looking at my historical data. Um, I can also have DAC Logger as a DDE server so that uh, essentially other people can extract data like Excel or something can be a DDE client. Some of the Wonderware uh, InTouches and other stuff like Inolution can also use a DDE server. Um, I've got a file utility here where I can do stuff like divide and chop up and merge files together. Um, I've also got a uh, control server here. Username, password. Okay. And I've got a uh, client server here. So DAC Logger can actually have multiple different clients coming into it as well. So I could have this one guy logging away here and several PCs running clients hitting this and kind of viewing the data just like I was viewing it locally here. All right, so I'm going to stop that. I'm also going to uh, bring up this historical viewer now. Now I've done a uh, video that goes over a lot of this type of viewer, uh, DAC standard. Its viewer is very much identical to this, but essentially I can go in here, go file, open, pick a file, and it'll allow me to kind of look at any historical data that may have been saved and just like the real-time viewer you know I can do stuff like stack stuff turn stuff on and off in terms of visualizing it I can go over here look at the values digitally as well okay I can kind of uh, link previous link next if there are any additional files okay in this case you know it's just gonna do an update with whatever the latest sample points are okay I can uh, also do this this is kinda of neat so say I'm looking at the trend here I can place a line anywhere on the trend and it'll update in there with what those values are I can also kinda of drag and drop a line and it'll tell me the difference between those two okay all right, so that's the historical viewer here. You can also take the data here, and if you want, you can go ahead and convert it to Excel. 
where to start, where to end, well, that's going with the cursors, but you could also, if I didn't have cursors on here, you could just do all of them, or you could say what tags you wanna do, where you wanna put the file, and then it'll go ahead and make you an Excel spreadsheet. So anyways, that's the basics of DAC Logger taking you all the way from some MXs and MWs sitting on your network, uh, bringing them all the way in through gate, into the project, scanning, recording, and viewing the data.